the one of the reasons I believe that you know other mobile money offerings have failed is they fail to recognize the incredible jobs that the banks have done in migrating cash to cards. So on Momo, if you register for us, we leverage the best technology for you to register with us. All of your fees are free. So now I understand why Spaza shop owners or even any informal merchant for that matter would keep their money under the bed. Because they need their 100 rand to be their 100 rand. Hello and welcome to IT Web TV. My name is Siba Femalinga and I'm joined in studio this afternoon by MTN SA's Chief Financial Services Officer, Brandon Roper, and today we're going to be unpacking the state of mobile services in South Africa. So we're going to be using MTN's mobile money service, Momo, as a unique case study that has gone on to garner much success in such a short space of time since it was relaunched back in 2020. I think many of us know too well that in Africa, mobile money has taken off and it's done fantastically well. But in South Africa, however, adoption has been slightly slower due to an array of factors. And we're going to be finding out what those factors are and exactly what MTN is doing so well because we've seen its competitors come and go in South Africa. We are really looking at adoption. We're looking at the barriers of mobile money in South Africa and we're looking at growth opportunities. We know that about 23% of South Africans remain unbanked, and that really is where the mobile money opportunity lies. Brethren, thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to IT Web. Thank you, thank you, thank you very much for having me. It's an honor to be here and to talk to you and your listeners and your viewers. Yes, yeah. we are indeed looking forward to this conversation, but take us right back to when MTN's mobile money service was introduced in South Africa. What were your aims and objectives and I think it's important for us to also look at what the financial landscape in the country is uh-huh. looking like at the time. Yeah. You know, at MTN, we believe that everyone deserves the benefit of a modern, connected life. Um, and so this is why we've had multiple iterations of trying to launch Momo a few times, as most of your listeners will be aware of. Um, this time around, however, we launched in 2020, uh, just before the COVID lockdown. Um, with a whole different um, form factor of looking at how we could launch and solve for the purpose remains the same. You know, the the percentage, the high percentage of unbanked citizens in the country, as well as underbanked citizens in the country. So aligned to our purpose of a modern connected life, we believe that the start of that also includes, you know, digital literacy as well as financial literacy. So that's our purpose and that's why we relaunched again. Mm. And, you know, according to the World Bank, uh, there's quite a large number of unbanked South Africans. I think the number is around 23%. And that means that only 14 million South Africans do have bank accounts. But even within those, a significant number of those bank accounts actually are dormant. Uh So let's talk about the mobile money opportunity, because you're not just talking about the unbanked South Africans, but we're talking about underbanked South Africans. Correct. And let's talk about the services that you're offering through your Momo. Yeah. So, you know, we launched in, in 2020, as I said, in the midst of a global pandemic. And so what we had to do is innovate around payments and payment form factors. So if you look at our Momo offering today, there are over 13 different ways that customers can fund their wallets. Um, the One of the reasons I believe that, you know, other mobile money offerings have failed is they fail to recognize the incredible jobs that the banks have done in migrating cash to card. Um, you know, in 2017, we used to be a predominantly cash-based economy um, at, you know, sort of the monthly payment mix sitting at 60%. Fast forward to 2023, we see that we're a 60% card-based economy by value. And thanks largely to the COVID pandemic. Right? Yeah, I mean, there's the, I mean, we have to just say that the financial services sector in general is relatively sophisticated. You know, that being said, um, we still see that a typical bank behavior is, you know, money comes into the account and then consumers run to the ATM and they draw that money out um, because there's a little bit of confusion we call South African bank accounts wheat picks. You know, it just sucks up all the milk wow. because of different fees and services, um, you know, that are associated with those accounts. 
So on Momo, if you register for us, we leverage the best technology for you to register with us. All of your fees are free. So there's no monthly account fee for holding a deposit in your Momo wallet. There's 13 ways in which you can fund that wallet today. Um, and more importantly, for basic services such as airtime, electricity, lottery services, etc., cetera, um, the banks will charge you a fee every single time you perform those transactions. For our value-added services for our customers, there are no fees associated. So you can live a modern connected life with a zero fee sign up, a zero monthly fee, and you can connect to using airtime, electricity, lotto purchases, etc., all on Momo for free. So this is why we say just Momo it for free. And when you say or when so when you speak about all these services, all this is app based, correct? We know. So we when we talk about a modern connected life, um, you know, we recognize as well that so one of the form factors obviously is a smartphone. Um, and that's, you know, a highly sophisticated way that you can engage with Momo. But we also recognize that there are a ton of feature phones out there in South Africa. So we also offer our services on USSD. Correct. Uh, we see... We're based. We're based. We've got a Momo microsite, a Mobi site. Um, we've got a, 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 a USSD site as well. Um, you know, so we're catering for all South Africans across all demographics across all form factors as Momo. So let's go through, I know there's quite an array of services that you offer. I mean, I don't even see MTN's mobile money as, as a mobile money service. For me, this is like a digital mall or a <laughs> yeah. super app of sorts. Yeah, yeah. That's really what you are Yeah. because the services that you offer go beyond uh, even financial services. I know that you've got life covers. You yeah. you've know, users can even renew their vehicle licenses and do so much more. So let's yeah. talk about those services. Yeah, so, you know, when we think about, you know, how do we help, you know, citizens live a modern connected life, we think about you from and all factors of society from the second you wake up until the moment you go to bed. If we think about, you know, the ladies that are waking up to make magwenya, to go and sell, you know, magwenya, you know, how do we first get you connected? How do we, you know, get you moving? How are you able to, you know, pay for goods and services. So on the Momo platform today, um, firstly, the first thing you need is, is airtime. So everyone sort of wakes up and they want to start connecting with the world. So you can purchase airtime across any network. We're open to any network. You can purchase that on Momo. There's zero fees associated with, with that. If you look at some of the bank apps, um, and the bank apps, you know, are very rich in airtime purchases. And actually it's um, one of the highest utilities for services on the bank apps. The challenge, though, is they charge you a fee every per single time transaction. per transaction. Yeah, that... Whether you're buying electricity, whether you're buying uh -huh. time, every time there is, you know, I once went to uh, do something. Um, I, I was actually making a, a purchase yeah. um, at, a, at a filling station. Uh -huh. And I was buying electricity at the yeah. filling station and knowing that it's a convenience store, I said, how much am I being charged for this purchase? Yeah. And um, you know, the, the teller said nothing. I said, no, that's, that, that is just too good to be true. I yeah. don't believe that. Yeah. So when I looked at my statement uh, a few weeks later, I realized that I was actually being charged a percentage, uh -huh. however how, however much I paid, yeah. percentage of what, what I had paid for, yeah. for, for electricity. So uh, in the same breath, I wish I could believe that everything you're saying is free, is yeah. need free. Yeah. And if it is, then what's the catch? Because M to N has to make <laughs> its catch. There's there's no catch whatsoever. Um, you know, we are to to the point of a, of being a platform business. Um, a platform business means that we have partnerships. So when we sell airtime across any network, we make a commission on those sales. And who's who's paying for that commission? So we would earn a commission. Um, we're essentially a digital store, a digital super app in that in that sense. So if we sell airtime, we, for every rand that we sell, we get a percentage commission. So we're a retailer. For every sort of bus ticket that you sell, you can buy bus tickets on Momo. We would get a commission of those sales. But usually that commission comes from the funds that the consumer has paid. No, so we get it. So we're a wholesaler. This is how it works. So... So we're essentially a digital wholesaler. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's we have multiple sort of integrations. We have multiple APIs. Um, 
We don't really do bulk purchases. We leverage technology. So every th- single thing that we vend on our platform, you know, we have terms and conditions with our partners and essentially we get a commission. So we're not a charity. Um, we are a for-profit business, um, but we just believe that, you know, um, profit making does not have to be to the expense of the consumer. So if you take, for example, airtime, electricity purchases, we make a commission on all of those. Um, if you take, you know, lottery, you know, sports bettings become quite popular as well. So for every single um, thing that we sell, we would make a commission on that. Now, the banks make a commission on this, but they're also charging their consumers. So there's a double revenue effect there. So what we've gone is, because we are a late entrant, we don't have legacy technology or le- legacy fees to protect. You know, we can pass all of those benefits on to the consumer. And those fees amount, if you read some of the income statements of, you know, traditional income incumbents, are billions and billions of rands. So essentially our mission is, how do we take you know, 2 billion, 3 billion rand in fees and pass those on to the end consumer. The data will show that airtime electricity um, and all of these sort of daily purchases that consumers are used to paying a fee for, we can save South Africans up to 50 rand a month. That's five loaves of bread. That's five loaves of bread. So we can give you, you know, four to five loaves of bread just by momoing it for free. And we make a commission on that. So um, there should there should be no reason why we aren't the number one value added services app in South Africa today, because essentially it's a loaf of bread that you say are saving towards by just momoing it for free. When you look at the fact that an average South African actually lives below the bread line, uh-huh. it's a lot of money that uh-huh. you rent well, uh-huh. somewhere else. Yeah, it is really needed. Correct. So let's talk about achieving phenomenal success yeah. in such a short space of time. Uh-huh. You're now sitting at over 9 million registered uh, subscribers within MTN Momo. So this is obviously not MTN's total uh, subscriber membership. Of course. These are just those that use the mobile money service. Yeah. How did you get to that in less than three years? I think South Africans are so desperate for alternatives. Um, you know, we are tired as South Africans of being exploited. Um, we're seeking value. Um, you know, the cost of living because of inflation, etc., has become really, really high. Um, and so we're looking for alternatives. And what we've gone and done is we've looked at um, industries and sectors of the industry where we believe that consumers are being exploited. And how do we leverage the best in breed technology to try and help solve for these? Um, so the registration, um, one of the things that we just launched in September is a Momo Easy registration. So all you need is a number and a bank card and you can start playing around with some of the features and benefits of Momo. It takes you a couple of seconds. But if you want to register for a wallet that you can do more things on top of, not just remit money in and out, um, you can purchase airtime electricity, lottery tickets, boxer vouchers, pick and pay vouchers, food vouchers, grocery vouchers. Essentially, you can live your entire digital life on Momo for free. Um, and so that registration to get that wallet takes a matter of minutes because we're leveraging technology. And that, I think, has been our, our key to success is how do we, in a very simplistic manner that doesn't scare our users away, um, allow for a seamless, quick and easy registration. Um, 13 different ways to fund that wallet, recognizing the level of sophistication that South Africa finds itself in. Um, with 23,000 agents, um, points of presence inside every single pick and pay and box a store for you to fund your wallet. Um, so there are multiple ways that you can fund your wallet, including 23,000 agents across the country um, you know, you no longer have to wait for branch doors to be open and closed. Um, you can find a local agent that speaks your local language in your local township or, you know, your closest puzzle shop or whatever. We allow you to find your wallet, register quickly, seamlessly, and then just live your best digital life for free on Momo. Wow. So how many services do you offer in total and which of these are more popular? So obviously our most popular service, we are so blessed and privileged to, um, you know, be a fintech inside the might of MTN. Um, You know, with MTN's accolades, you know, strongest banking brand, continuously winning awards. Um, 
Obviously, our number one service includes, you know, purchasing airtime on Momo, and there's some incredible value um, that we offer on Momo exclusively for MTN. Um, but obviously, then being able to, so I don't just have to purchase MTN, I can purchase a whole array of airtime for any sort of um, network on Momo. Um, our second biggest popular, our second most popular aspect then becomes things like other value added services, electricity, uh, bus tickets, um, vouchers, you know, one for you vouchers, um, essentially just the types of vouchers, grocery vouchers that allow you to live your best digital life from the second you wake up until the moment you go to bed that allows you to peer to peer, um, while it's obviously has scaled and that's been the monumental success in Africa. So peer to peer sending, remember if I send you a Momo wallet, I can send you that money mahala. And that money reflects real time. So I can send money home. Exactly. Correct. And you can send this money to any part of the continent. So so we'll get to international remittances. So Momo to Momo is real time. So I can send money in real time to uh, another Momo registered subscriber. That send is free. That other uh, Momo subscriber can then use that money to live their version of their best digital life on Momo. Um, and so that's been a monumental success as well. Um, but one of the other launches that um, we just put live in September was international remittances. So we recognized, you know, that some of the incumbents, here's another industry um, where we saw a lot of people getting, um, you know, ripped off by incumbents. Um, if I want to send, you know, $100, the fee that I would then pay, uh, let's say I want to send $100 to Zimbabwe or, um, you know, $100 to um uh, Nigeria, um, I was paying up to 10%, so $110 to send that money. Um, we launched um, a few months ago, so we cost 4% on the remit, so it's $104, so it's much cheaper. And here's the interesting thing. So we've got tens of millions of Momo subscribers on the continent. So when I send money to another Momo user on the continent, not only am I paying um, up to 60% less, but that's real time. So a Momo to Momo, send from South Africa, re recipient in Uganda, Cote d'Ivoire, Nigeria, all of the opcos where we have Momo, that's real time. That's quicker than a bank. I've had uh, to wait three or four days to receive money from the U.S. And mm -hmm. I couldn't believe how long that took, mm -hmm. you know, with today's technology. Yeah, yeah. So, so South Africa remits about $2 billion out. So we are a monstrous um, remit out. And most of that actually is on the continent itself. So we're an Afrocentric business, and that's why we've solved for um, Africa to Africa remittances. And as I said, you know, 60% cheaper than what some of the incumbents are charging. Um, and more importantly, real time, because, you know, we recognize if I'm sending $100 home or to a loved one on the continent, that's, you know, feeding, um, you know, loved ones back home. That could be for a for medical emergency, for emergency school fees. And that's why we wanted to innovate on the speed of receipt as well. Um, so, yeah, we're very excited. Receiving the cost, but it's about receiving money and as soon Correct. as you can. Correct. So let's talk about that $100. How much would, would I have to pay or how, or, or how much would be deducted in fees from that $100? In other words, if I'm sending my mother $100 in some way in the yeah. URC, mm -hmm. how much would they end up receiving on average when we look at, you know, bank charges and the fact that they might have to go through, you know, several intermediaries yeah. to get there? Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean, that's a fascinating question. So ours is a very simple value proposition. So you want to send $100, um, we charge you a flat 4%. So you as the sender would pay $104 to send. So it's 4%. The incumbents would charge you 10%. But here's the trick. The, the recipient, um, who knows what they're being charged on the ground. So ours is a digital um, remit. So it, you know for sure that the, the receiver is receiving the money in real time. Um, typically what happens is, you know, if you're sending it to someone and they have to go to an agent, that agent might not have a full hundred dollars on them, so you'd have to split it up, and then there's multiple fees associated with that. So those fees keep stacking. Um, ours is a real-time remit, so I send a hundred dollars. 
I pay 4% on the remit, which is 60% cheaper. The recipient receives it in real time and they can derive real value. So if you think about, you know, Momo in Nigeria or Uganda, immediately that recipient can start living their best digital life. So they can buy airtime in their local country. They can do whatever the features and benefits are that Momo have in those countries in real time. Very interesting. So we've seen many players come and go in South Africa's mobile money space. Mm -hmm. And some of those companies have actually gone on to succeed outside of the country, mm -hmm. you know, within the continent. And um, I myself have spoken to several uh, telecoms and financial experts who have, or who have repeatedly said, unfortunately, South Africa does not have a good case for mm -hmm. the success of mobile money simply because we have such a, a higher number of banked uh -huh. uh, consumers yeah. in other countries within the continent. And and another reason, I suppose, would also just be, you know, the, our regulatory uh, barriers. Yeah. Uh, you know, that you have to be either linked or associated to a bank uh -huh. if you are a fintech that is offering a mobile money service. And, and of course, the, the requirements and yeah. the reasons, the contributing factors behind that are endless. And we'll get to that in just a moment. Mm -hmm. But I just want to hear from you. Do you believe that it is harder to, to succeed as a mobile money service in South Africa than it is outside the continent? Oh, for sure. Um, as mentioned, you know, we're quite a sophisticated, you know, financial services economy um, with deep penetration already. Um, as mentioned, you know, by value, 60% of all the payment form factors are happening on a card basis. But there's still tons of opportunity. Um, and why I think we've got it right is recognizing the, la the lay of the land, um, innovating around 13 different form factors to be able to fund your wallet. Um, 23, so we also physical and digital, so we're a digital fintech. Um, 23,000 agents. And speaking you don't need to be associated to a bank. No. Your your customers can be unbanked. Correct, correct. And still be able to use Momo services to, correct. to its full potential. Correct. So here's 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 an interesting insight for you. Um eighty five percent of our Momo funding today happens from a bank to a wallet. Um uh, we were also one of the first fintechs to allow that in twenty twenty, recognizing so we've innovated tremendously around digital payments and digital form factors because of the COVID pandemic. Mm. But there's still 15% of our funding that happens at an agent level or at a retailer level. Um, and that's why you have to, in South Africa, be both. You have to be both digital and physical mm. um, because that 15% is quite high in volume. And so you mentioned, you know, the, the high number of uh, people who use Momo or, or rather was, uh, the high number of transactions that actually end up in a bank account uh -huh. or vice versa on your platform. Yeah. And it's, it's very interesting because uh, I know that also another opportunity you've taken is just leveraging from the, the unbanked population of uh -huh. South Africa. And the World Bank says there's about 23% of South Africans who are currently un unbanked. So leaving us with about 40 million South Africans who are banked for zero million forty? Um, who are banked, and you know, between those, I, I I was actually shocked this morning as I was preparing for this interview to learn that about twelve billion, um, worth of cash actually remains outside uh -huh. of the banking system. So yeah. you've got all these people still using cash, yeah, and you know, and and this it it it, it, it remains unaccounted for yeah. by the banks. Yeah. So and and there there is the mobile money opportunity. So it cannot be true that there is no case for mobile money in South Africa, especially because you've proven that it is possible. Yeah. It's not easy, but it's possible yeah. to succeed. So let's talk about those challenges. Yeah. Why we've seen companies come and go with some of them are your competitors, others are fintechs in this space that have not succeeded. And we see that more money services, which which have been succeeding even before MTN came into the play, are those linked to a banking service, like your uh -huh. wallets, for instance. Uh -huh. So uh, what is it that you're doing right? And what are the key challenges? So, you... so I want to say anyone that thinks that mobile money is not going to work or fintechs are not going to work in South Africa are looking in the rearview mirror. 
we're looking forward, we're forging forward, we're leveraging the breast and breed technology to help, you know, democratize access to products and services that previously corporates would have thought were unimaginable for sectors of the economy. Um, on the cash... Because there are real challenges yeah, yeah, yeah. associated yeah. with establishing. And maybe let's go through those challenges first. Yeah. Um, you mentioned the language barrier. The, so, so there's obviously the language barrier in digital literacy and then financial literacy. So in order to do that, um, we have 23,000 agents um, that operate 24-7. Um, we have a sophisticated sign-up process on USSD. We are on every single app store. In fact, we are now seventh ranked of financial services app in in the country, which is actually a better ranking than some big banks out wow. there. Um, and and because we pour so much effort and energy into our user journeys, our user stories, um, as well as our agent app as well. So making sure that our agents, you know, have a tool, a piece of technology, all of our agents are equipped with technology themselves, making sure that they understand the technology so they can speak confidence to those millions of South Africans that are so desperate for an, for an alternative. That's the one thing. The other thing you touched on, which I think is a very crucial point um, in why there's so much cash in the system. The other thing we just launched is, you know, no fintech has thought carefully about, you know, the consumer as well as the SMME, as including SPAZA shops. So our estimate is that the SPAZA economy is in excess of 180 billion rand. Um, we know that 80% of South Africans visit SPAZA shops. So where do you find myself and my team? We're in the trenches, in SPAZA shops, understanding from spaza owners you know what some of the challenges are and i can tell you the single biggest challenge for why there's still high amounts of cash is because the cost of accepting cash in any payments in anything other than cash so i mean a spaza shop cannot afford to pay a certain percentage of uh of cmb choice five percent they're using a speed point correct yeah. correct they're, they're, they're that's it just amounts to be to being something ridiculous on a daily basis. Correct. So we've just gone live with um, to help the SMME economy. Uh, we call it our business sub wallet. So you register, same app, same rail. You can register on the app for a business sub wallet. That gets you a merchant ID in seconds. You also get a merchant QR, which means you can accept payments in the form of Momo. And guess what? We've zero rated that. So for you know, you're, they, they are about 1.1 million informal workers out there, um, traders. Um, they can register for a business sub wallet and they can tender their trade mahala. So if you think about that. What does that mean for, for, for the relationship and the payment that is done by the consumer? To yeah, to let me make it real on that 100 grand. So for, I'm a vendor, I'm selling sweets, I'm selling maguena, I'm selling, you know, goods and services. If I sell to you 100 rands worth of goods and services, the incumbents are going to take 3%. So I'm only going to see 97 rand of that money. Then I put it into a bank account and the bank will charge me 7 rand for putting that money in the account. So my 100 rand is now 90 rand. On Momo, you show your QR or I give you my merchant ID for a feature phone. I sell you goods and services. My 100 rand is my 100 rand. There's no fee that we charge for payments using Momo on the business sub wallet. More importantly, your registration is quick, it's easy, and we don't charge you a monthly account fee. So your Momo wallet is not like bank. It's not like wet picks that just sucks up the milk. <laughs> <laughs> your 100 rand is your 100 rand, and you keep it and you do with it whatever you want. We're not going to charge you. And so... So now I understand why Spaza shop owners or even any informal merchant for that matter would keep their money under the bed. Because, because they need their 100 rand to be their 100 rand. Yeah. And um, then, but now with services such as Momo... Yeah. It's, and it's easy to understand what, they, what, what value you have, what value they stand to gain. Yeah. But what about Momo? Where do you uh, get your profit? So... Very simplistically, we just see that as a mechanism to help, firstly, SMEs um, to be able to digitize their cash. So when we spoke about the benefits of a modern connected life, 
we recognize that for those 1.1 million SMMEs that are waking up at 3 o'clock in the morning and kick-starting South Africa's economy, we wanted to make sure that they de-risk themselves because we recognize that that commute home is probably the most dangerous trip for any consumer that's going home because they have so much cash shoved on their person and they are praying that they're not going to get robbed at knife and gunpoint. So we want to do good business and we want to rec- we want to help those SMMEs solve for you know that risk in the commute home but also digitize them. But we see the network effect there, right? Because if we say, Momo, or please pay me with Momo um, for as an SMME, that then becomes another nodal point for us to be able to grow end user cons- uh, consumer. So we're not thinking about an SMME or consumer, we're thinking about the entire economy and the entire ecosystem. And when we recognize how we want to monetize ourselves as well, we take a holistic view of the entire economics of the situation. So, um, obviously, you know, if that merchant takes cash, you know, we hold that balance and we can do other things, you know, with the float on that balance in order to monetize that. Um, but the ability then to just solve for, you know, 178 billion potentially that's sitting in so much cash, um, if we can digitize that and help make sure that customers can then spend on Momo that then becomes a viable business case. One more stat for you. Um, Of the people that cash in on Momo, remember I said to you, 85% is coming in um, sort of from a bank account into Momo, using different form factors, either instant EFT or card to wallet, a whole array of form factors. But here's an interesting thing. Um, Customers are not cashing that money out. So 85% of that money is actually spent on Momo. Because we've built such a feature-rich, you're probably going to ask me whether we consider ourselves a super app. For sure. We've built such a feature-rich app that 85% of every 100 rand that comes spent on Momo. Customers are wow. spending on is Momo. Of, of the variety of services Correct. that you now offer on Correct. a daily basis. And then only 15% of that is then cashed out. So 15%, again, you can cash out, pick and pay. Uh, any one of our 23,000 agents. We've got a partnership with one of our banks, so you, one of the banks, so you can go to an ATM. Mm. So we have really thought holistically about morning to night, form factor, spending on the platform, and that essentially is how we're able to grow subscribers and grow revenue at the same time. Mm. You know, uh, just this weekend, I was teaching a friend of mine how to shop on uh, one of the retailers, one of the big retailers app because uh-huh. she had always just had to go into the car uh-huh. and drive to the shopping center down uh-huh. the road. And I just felt that that was so unnecessary. Yeah. Especially with all these specials that you're having online. Correct. You know? Correct. So, you know, it just dawned on me that maybe I'm just taking things for granted, being a tech journalist, you know, I get to interview, you know, a lot of these, um, the, these executives who are behind these apps and, mm-hmm. And and so I would know and teach myself my way around around this. But an average South African really still doesn't use these things. Yeah. A lot of these apps because they simply think that they are too difficult to use. Yeah. Perhaps they feel that well, wh- whatever the reason is, it may be a particular level of ignorance because yeah. you think that you won't be able to to do so, yeah. or you won't know what to do when you get on the app. But I guess that is just a reality when you look at a lot of these digital services that we have. Yeah. I mean, I took a while to use my banking app. Yeah. And for some reason, <laughs> uh, but but I had been using it uh, the, the the web the web based. Yeah. On my laptop, whenever I was not on my laptop, I couldn't use I couldn't use my my, my bank my yeah. bank account. Yeah. Which was really ridiculous. Yeah. Because what was on there is exactly what's on the app. Yeah. So let's talk about, you know, just being tech savvy, whether yeah. somebody has to really be tech savvy to be able to use your app yeah. and what you've had to take, some of the considerations you've had to make yeah. to make it an easy app to use. Sure, sure. Um, you know, I want to walk a journey with you for a minute about uh, financial services and technology. You know, sort of the 60s and 70s was about, you know, the ATM revolution, um, and then we moved into, you know, the 80s and the 90s, which was sort of um, online banking 
and that was all the all the the rage. We then moved into um, you know the noughties, which then became sort of app banking, and that became the form factor. And I would argue that the era we're entering into now is the fintech mobile money um, revolution. Did you see it coming right there? <laughs> I mean, I did everything to avoid using my bank app. I just, I mean, there, there's a reason why, you know, I've spent 10 years in the financial services sector and now I find myself okay. as a fintech leader. You, you knew a lot more than <laughs> what you did. So. Um, and so if I think about my grand, so my grand was a Tosa domestic worker and I was the kid that had to accompany her to the ATM. Mm. That was the technology at the time. She, she was so scared. Take public transport even to get Correct, there. correct, correct. So I was, you know, dipping the card, punching in the pin, and because that technology scared her at the time. Um, and so what we've recognized is um, in order to help bridge that digital gap and that financial literacy gap, we've launched on Momo uh, a feature called Money Clever. So I refer you. Um, there's a host of features, so be it international remittances, prepaid funeral cover, which we haven't even touched on. We've launched a prepaid funeral service. You know, free VAS, live your best moment life for free. Here's how you buy airtime, electricity, bus that. tickets. I wonder how 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 easy it would be for a go go to go on that app. So buy that. So I can I can refer you. So I find something that I like on Momo, and I'm like, go go look here. Um, here's how you must buy your airtime on Momo, right? Um, and if I refer go go, um, we also recognize that the job to be done is too big for one institution. So anyone that refers a customer for Momo, um, if that customer then successfully registers and starts transacting on Momo, you get 10 Rand. Mm -hmm. So we've now democratized digital literacy and financial literacy as well. So if you're going to take the time to explain a feature or benefit to someone um, that you like about Momo, you do it on the Momo app and I go, go, go. Yeah, what's your number? Here's your number. Or I can get it from my phone book. I then help Google register. Um, and she starts transacting. I get 10 Rand. Um, because the job to be done around financial literacy and digital literacy is too big. But we also recognize that time is money. So for every successful referral, and we're seeing a monumental growth in um, our referral campaign, you get 10 Rand. So there's some people that can make a living out of just referring people to Momo mm. based on A or multiple features that they enjoy about Momo. Mm, mm. Nice. Um, so, uh, you know, we, we are seeing a lot of telcos, um, your competitors uh, now establishing um, platforms which are, I'm not going to say similar to yours because everybody has a different strategy, but these are platforms that are now going beyond um, f financial offerings because we, we saw you know, the teleco operators, yeah. we saw them transform into banks and now they're going beyond that and they're offering, you know, third-party services. I can now go on the telco's app and I can actually do some shopping on there and buy from a supermarket. I can go on there and and, and, and um, look for a plumber to come and fix, yeah. you know, my, my, my plumbing in the house. And so is MTN looking in that direction? I know that a lot of the services you offer are finance focused. Yeah. Are you looking to become a digital mall and offer third party services? I mean, yeah. Yeah, we think deliver food delivery apps. Yeah. Are now now you can yeah. go on there and buy a dress. Yeah. Know, who would have yeah. thought that yeah. it would yeah. happen? <laughs> yeah. So, you know, our job to be done is digital and financial literacy. Um and the other, the other thing that we got right, I think, is if you think about traditional incumbents, they've been fixated on a perfect product mindset. So we need a product owner and we need to build it and own it ourselves. We've migrated towards a perfect partnership mindset. So ours is a platform business um, where we have perfect product, um, a perfect partnerships that we brought on board. So if you think, for example, about international remittances, we've partnered with a local Adler that own the license, that understand the regulatory called ClickSend now. And they are the embedded inside Momo, um, the partner that allows even foreign nationals to register and enjoy the benefit of international remittances. If we think about 
uh, our very own funeral cover where we've partnered with an intermediary called IO and Sunlam as the wholesale provider. We wanted a big brand, a trusted brand. You know, South Africans are so tired of being exploited for funeral plans. So we've partnered with named whole brands. Um, and so what you'll find on the platform is an array of financial services, fintech features and benefits. That being said, we're not exclusive to just those features and benefits, correct. So we do have other services. So, and in that sense, you know, we are going to be exploring. You could watch the space. In fact, we've got something launching just um, before the end of December um, for customers to be able to do e-commerce directly through a partnership of ourselves um, called uh, Malipo um, going live very, very financial. Uh Offering? It's it's an e-commerce platform. So think, you know, all these uh, different malls, these value malls, there's China Mall of the West and all that kind of ah, stuff. So With the services. Correct. Transformation is actually unfolding. On mine. Right? Yeah. Correct. Correct. Okay. But so our benefit. The, this me on the Tamland push matter. You'll be going beyond financial services very soon. Correct. We are thinking about every aspect of your life. From, as I said, the moment you wake up until the moment you go to bed. Um, but when we, where we can find a partnership where we're seeing sectors of society being exploited and we can pass some of those savings back to consumers, we'll partner there and make sure that we're passing as many of those benefits onto consumers as possible. But we're also not going to be exclusive because you hold a, a balance with us on your Momo wallet. We want to drive utility on that wallet. So it's not just going to be cash in, cash in, cash out. We're a sophisticated economy. So we want to innovate and make sure that you can do as much with that wallet as possible so that you never have to leave our platform. Um, as mentioned, you know, 85% is already spent on Momo. And as we start loading more and more Momo users onto the platform, we're going to have to innovate to make sure whatever the mega trends are, whatever people want to spend their Momo wallet on, that's where you'll find us. So uh, beyond adding services and more partners, um, bringing more partners on board, are you also looking at adding, perhaps scaling your 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 app, adding more functionality, adding more services, uh-huh. innovating, advancing certain elements? Of course. I mean, um, we've launched so many different things in the last six months. Um, we're continuously scanning the market. Um, 2024 is going to be quite an exciting year for Momo. Um, we'll continue to scan the market and look for opportunities where we can leverage best-in-breed technology with a best-in-breed partner to be able to launch um, features and benefits that can help democratize access to financial services like never before. That's our mission. Wow. And that's the operative word, really, Democratizing financial access. Correct. And I think it's also uh, democratizing digital access uh-huh. because, you know, when you have this in your hand, it opens a whole new world. Indeed. Well, thank you so much, uh, Bradley. I think the one thing we're forgetting, and yeah. and I didn't know this for a very long time, is that Momo is accessible across all SIM cards. Any network. We are open for business. Um, we don't want to exclude any sector of the economy any societal member, um, we allow you to register um, across any network. Obviously, the best features and benefits are reserved for MTN subscribers. Um, But yeah, we're open for business. Thank you so much, Bradley. We do wish you all the best with the, the, the phenomenal work that you're doing. And I know that very soon you'll be right at the top of that list. You number seven. <laughs> Challenge accepted. <laughs> Thank you. Well, there you have it. Remember that for these and more interviews, do subscribe to our YouTube channel, IT Web TV, and on Twitter, as well as other social media platforms as IT Web.